Welcome to Wrestle Capsule. My name is B, and this is a channel where you're going to be getting your dose of pro wrestling talk. And this is another episode from the Off the Cuff series. So this is going to be a multiple topic episode today. I got a lot of things I want to talk to you guys about. A lot of things I want to catch up with. And one of them being, <laughs> we're going to start with the ladies, okay? Kairi Zane and Asuka joining damage control? What? Asuka, the whole Asuka turning on Bianca and, and Charlotte, like, it was only a matter of time. And I love this shift because I've been sick and tired of Asuka playing on the sidelines when she is a, she's, she is the main character, okay? She's got main character energy. And I'ma go with the bad squad, okay? So I, oh my gosh, I can't, I, I can't, I'm still processing Friday Night Smackdown. For the longest time, WWE has been playing this game of just taking us on this roller coaster of is EO going to break away from damage control? Is Bailey and EO gonna be at variance with one another? Is damage control going to just be destroyed? And just when I think damage control is gonna burn and die up in flames, it's like a psych gnaw moment because now damage control looks bigger and better than ever. It's amazing how it all started with SummerSlam of last year. I was floored. It was like the best surprise ever. And then going forward, I had such high expectations for damage control. And I just saw them kind of do like, like <laughs> those, those expectations were not met. And I kept giving damage control chance after chance after chance as a fan. I was so excited to see Bailey be in the forefront for once and have her own group take EO Sky and Dakota Kai under her wing and have this bombastic faction but like fast forwarding now with you know EO and Bailey teasing this whole breakup and then turning around adding new <laughs> members to the group or is damage control really breaking up and Triple H is just messing with us and this group is what we're going to get next. <laughs> I always prefer to watch SmackDown over Raw, even though I do watch both the state, you know, current on things. When I watch Raw, not only, and like besides the fact that Monday Night Raw is three hours, yes, it's a long freaking time on a Monday, okay? Monday, 8 to 11 p.m., are you freaking kidding me? But besides, even if Raw was two hours, just like SmackDown, Still, like the storylines on Raw, like how every the, the flow of it. But I'm still trying to give Raw an opportunity, especially considering the shift of, you know, Vince having less control over creative and Triple H having much more say in creative. And I mean, like I've said a thousand times on this channel, the products speak for itself. Like just take Monday Night Raw, this past Monday Night Raw. We were seeing people that Triple H had brought back to Raw, not only brought back, but put them on their main roster. And we're seeing people that we don't normally see, having actual matches, having actual TV time, growing people, like we're seeing it in at first, as I was watching Monday Night Raw, I tell y'all, I kid you, no lie. I was, cr I was this, this, this. If y'all can see my finger this close from turning it off. Shit whack. As, as I sat back and was just watching Raw, I started to see the goal. Triple H is trying so hard to build up the the raw division because smackdown all 
ready has it but like with raw like their interaction judgment day with you know cody rose and jay uso and Sami Zayn and seth rollins like it's gotten tired but i'm so glad that now we're going to have them going at each other at war games i pray that this will be the end of this saga between these two groups you have Rhea Ripley, whose reign has gotten so much more interesting. I won't rehash that because I've said it in several different videos. I know you guys are tired of me talking about it, but I can see what Triple H is doing now. I can see that Triple H is trying really hard, and I'm specifically going to talk about the women. Building up the, div the women's division on Monday Night Raw because they need it. Not only because Rhea Ripley is the reigning and finally defending WWE Women's World Champion, Rhea Ripley needs competition and we're starting to see it now, but also because we have one wrestler who recently got signed to WWE who is probably going to debut on Monday Night Raw, Jade Cargill. Jade! can't just make her debut in the WWE Raw ring with no competition. How can you really build this woman if there's no strong women for her to go up against? Like, and I know a lot of people are asking like, where's Jade, where's Jade, where's Jade, where's Jade? Like we've seen her make appearances but not officially debut in the ring. Like, we haven't seen that yet, and I fully believe this is the reason why Triple H is preparing the table. <laughs> and I'm willing to be patient with that because I see that Triple H is trying real hard. I'm seeing what Triple H is doing with the men as well. Like, but once again, I have to go back to it's gonna take some time. Uh, it's gonna take some time for me to fully get on board with Monday Night Raw, but Grown Pains, gotta be patient. He's cooking something, he's trying. Like, it, every time these people come out, even like DIY or like, you know, people like Tegan Knox or Zia Lee or Indy Hartwell, those people who are getting a lot more shine now that Triple H is f practically fully in control, the crowd is not really, <laughs> they're not, they're not feeling it all the way and it's gonna take time for them to get invested and, they, and that comes with the territory. So we're, we'll see with that. Drew McIntyre turned heel. What? What the f Like, I've been talking about this like ever since he lost his match against Seth freaking Rollins for the World Heavyweight Championship at Crown Jewel. I've been like, yo. You lost. After everything you've been through, you lost again. When you come back on Raw, you better turn heel. I am so happy that he ended up interfering in that match and helping Judgment Day pin for the 1-2-3 to retain their undisputed WWE Tag Team Championships. Is he with Judgment Day? Like, is he joining Judgment Day? Like, JD McDonough joined Judgment Day? Or is he just in alliance with Judgment Day? Man, oh man, I'm intrigued to see what promos and, or, and explanations are gonna come out for next week. Guys, let me know in the comments down below what you think of all the stuff that I talked about in this episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more episodes. Thank you so much for watching. Signing off, bye.